vodka, I mean agua. Can you hear that? Yes, they're still putting in the new mailboxes. It's, uh, what time is it anyway? It's currently, yeah, currently 10 after 9 in the morning. Normally I would be fast asleep at this time, but yeah, I just got the itch to do some videos. So here I am, itching and doing videos. <laughs> I am itching. Anyway, um, yeah, so carrying on with the computer parts overview of Doom. Yeah, this is something that I've never ever talked about. I mean, I did like a couple of videos when I got like a new monitor or something, but or a new hard drive, but I never really did it, did an overview of everything. So, yeah, hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so today we're actually going to talk about the various graphics and sound cards that I've used in the computers that I've owned over the years, and probably a couple of other random things too. I don't think there's actually that many parts left to go into, so maybe we'll try to cram them all into this part and then we'll be done and we can move on to something else, alright? Okay, so let's get on with it today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Dokey. So, once again, a little something that carried over from the Pentium 3 into the F1 was this, which is actually a sound card, just a standard, you know, 16-bit Sound Blaster style sound card. Now, those of you who had sound cards back in the day may recall that they were often used as multi-function devices. I don't know why. I don't know why they felt the need to put all this stuff on the sound card, but Go figure. I saw this a number of times. We actually have two phone jacks. This is a dial-up modem. Yep. <laughs> and what's this? What's this doing on a sound card? What kind of sound plug is that? Well, it's no kind of sound plug. That's actually for a joystick. Yeah, or a joypad or whatever. The uh, a, a game device of some kind. Plug in there. And then you got your headphone jack. Oh my god, an actual jack on the sound card that's related to sound. Who would have thunk it? And then you got this big cable. So this means it would actually take up two slots in the back. I mean only one one actual card slot, obviously. It's a it's a PC is it a PCI? Yeah, it's a PCI card. And uh, but then you'd have two two of the panels in the back taken up. So this one just has all your standard uh, you know inputs and whatnot. So anyway, I used this thing for years. I used this thing up to, I think up to this year, actually. So I probably used this sound card for about 10 years, and it was a part of the Pentium 3, which I had bought used from a friend of mine, and who knows how many years it had been used before then. But uh, yeah, it served me very well for a very long time. But then it started um, malfunctioning, essentially. I'd be you know, doing a webcast or something, and suddenly the audio would just explode into static and nothing I could do could fix it and basically something was something was going on the card so after a while I realized yeah it's it's on its way out I gotta uh, I gotta replace that so I bought this from Rocketfish I actually have a Rocketfish power supply as well which I'll talk about in a little bit yeah this is basically a 5.1 surround sound card with optical out and your standard uh, three connector out and a headphone jack. So there you go. Not too shabby. And uh, I'm actually selling this to one of my regulars in the chat room because um, I don't really have need of it because again it's a PCI card. But here, oh my god, a sound card that's just sound. They no longer feel the need to make the multifunction devices and I guess there isn't really that big of a demand for dial-up modems anymore and most gaming devices are USB like pretty much everything else so finally we can have a sound card that only takes up one spot in your uh, in the back of your PC one of my regulars is actually buying this off of me for a pretty decent price especially considering I hardly used it at all um, I really I, I don't think I've had it for more than six months 
and so it's pretty much good as new. I mean, there's not even any dust on it. I mean, not at all. So, yeah. So anyway, that's pretty cool. So I'm basically just going with the onboard audio, and then I figure if need be later, I'll upgrade to something bigger and more current, and like really properly upgrade. So then graphics cards. Okay, going back to the Pentium 3 again for a moment. The Pentium 3 was originally a Windows 98 system. And I don't know if something happened. It was I, I bought it off a friend of mine over in Ontario and he mailed it out to me. Very well packaged, lots of packing material and stuff, but I don't know if it got bumped or something in transit. All I know is it wasn't long before I gave it the nickname of Crashy because it would crash constantly. And it would be one of those annoying crashes where I'd be just, you know, opening a folder or renaming a file and the entire system would freeze. Mouse pointer freeze, everything freeze and would just lock up. And the only thing you could do was like a hard reset to reboot it. And it did this constantly. So I thought, ah, oh, must be some of the, something on the motherboard or something got jostled and it's just screwed everything up. So I tried everything I could think of. I replaced as many parts in that thing as I possibly could. Now that I look back, I probably could have afforded to buy a whole new computer with the amount I spent on parts for this thing. So one of the things I got, of course, was the USB card, which we talked about last time, and the FireWire card, which we also talked about last time. But another thing I did was I replaced all the memory in it, and I maxed out the memory. I forget how much that thing could hold. It wasn't a lot by today's standards, maybe 512 megs, maybe a gig. Was it a gig? Might have been a gig. I can't actually remember. It was like five, six years ago. But anyway, another thing I got was a graphics card. I thought, okay, it keeps freezing. Maybe it's a display problem. So I thought, let's get a graphics card to take over all the display options. So this is one from ATI. I actually looked for the box. I thought I still had the box for it, but I, I guess I misplaced it. But uh, this is a 32 megabyte graphics card. Again, PCI slot. <laughs> I'm just all about the PCI cards, man. I love them. And pretty cool, actually, as far as graphics cards go. I mean, yeah, obviously it doesn't have a lot of horsepower, only 32 megs, and being a PCI card. Not PCI Express, just regular PCI. We're kicking it old school here. So we got a VGA plug, DVI plug, and this is cool. Composite video out. Yeah. So you can actually just plug this into your TV, like into your video jack on your TV. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah, and I actually did do that a few times, and it was uh, it was pretty neat. Obviously, a TV, like a regular standard definition TV, can't handle all the high resolution of a computer, but it could at least, uh, you know, I could record games and stuff pretty easily. So that was pretty cool. For a while, I had that one plugged into the, uh, the Athlon system, but it wasn't long before I realized that, yeah, this just isn't, isn't cutting it, and it was really slow. I mean, forget watching any kind of high definition content or anything on there. So, a couple years ago, I upgraded to this beast. Yeah, because the Athlon system actually has an AGP slot, which of course is for graphics. I thought, oh yes, I can finally make the leap from PCI to AGP. And uh, holy crap, what a difference. I was actually really lucky to get this because this was at the time when PCI Express was basically taking over for graphics cards and for all kinds of peripherals and whatnot. Let me just open this sucker up here and I'll give you a look at it. This was like a godsend. I mean, just the difference in performance was incredible. I mean, the Athlon is a pretty speedy system to begin with, all things considered. But check this beast out compared to the one we just looked at. I mean, this actually has cooling, uh, like cake thingy, cooling stuff on it. It's got a fan and, yeah, sorry, brain's not working too good. I'm not accustomed to being up at this hour. But yeah, it's got just so much extra hardware on it. Mmm, even smells nice and computery. Love that nice sort of, I don't know how you'd describe it, just sort of a, an ozone smell almost. I don't know. The smell of processors, yummy. Anyway, really nice uh, nice card. Pretty much the same in terms of outputs, except instead of, uh, you got the DVI, you got the VGA, and then instead of a composite, you've actually got an S video out, which is quite nice. So that gives you better better quality analog output than the, uh, the composite. So this one I'm actually selling as well because I don't need it. Plus I don't think the new motherboard actually has an AGP slot. AGP, AGP is just gone now. Like it just, 
is not used anymore. So what can you do? So I figure, okay, well, I can't use it. Maybe someone else can. So if anyone out there can use it, here's what you get in the package. Basically, everything that was included originally is included now. So you have, for example, an S-Video to component cable. Sorry, so you can see that a little better. S-Video to component cable. So you can actually output, again, to your TV using component cables. You got a uh, VGA to DVI adapter, so you can actually turn the other VGA port into another DVI port if you want, which is pretty cool. And of course, the driver disc and manuals. Everything is included. It's good as new, and I dusted it and cleaned it all out, so it's very pretty and wonderful. I have no idea what these things go for right now, so make me a reasonable offer and we'll talk. All right? Oh, so that's pretty cool. Oh, one thing I will say, being an ATI Radeon, anybody who's had experience with Radeons will know that certain ATI cards are a bit picky about drivers. I could not get it to work with the drivers that were included on the disc. However, going to the ATI website, I was able to get a slightly older driver that worked with that card. So that problem may have since been fixed. As I say, this was a couple of years ago, so who knows. All right, hold it, hold it. We're getting a little bit rambly again. So let's split this up into two parts. Uh, I was just looking at the raw footage and apparently I went on for almost half an hour <laughs> about the last few components. Apparently I had a lot to say about them. All right, so we'll call this the end of part one and I'll see you guys in part two. Until then, thanks for watching and sayonara. There are serial ATA headers there. How did I not see those? <sighs> uh, so we got a VGA, VGA adapter. Uh,